Hey, I hope you're having an incredible day. Today, I'm about to blow your mind. Picture this, you hit literally one single button and a full blog post with amazing images entirely generated by AI appears like magic. I know it sounds wild, but it's real. And today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own auto blogger that does exactly this. No more late nights, no more staring at a blank screen, just pure automated content gold. Now get this 80% of Pinterest users are searching for home decor ideas. Yeah, 80%. So if your blog is all about home decor, like mine is, this tool is going to be a total game changer. And the best part, I'm not just leaving you to figure this out alone. I'm going to personally help five people build this out one on one. You'll have me guiding you step by step to set up your own auto blogger that writes, designs and publishes posts all on autopilot. If this sounds like something you're into, just click the link below to apply. You'll join no code nation, a team of automation experts building some of the best stuff on the web today. Just pop in your info. You'll chat with my AI voice agent, have a quick friendly convo. After that, you'll get your personal access link to join the no code nation. With that being said, let's hop right into this and how we can build this out step by step. All right, guys. So I'm super excited to be presenting this to you right now. This is extremely powerful. Literally, you can create as many different blog posts as you want, and it all starts with Airtable. So essentially, this is where I'm inputting my idea right here. You can see this one, the example that I just showed you, festive Christmas decor living, like this is AI generated. All the pictures on this website right now are AI generated, which just blows my mind because they're absolutely beautiful. And so what you do is you input your idea first, and then you're going to hit create. That's going to generate you an, an expanded idea. So it's going to give you the different top 10 of what it comes up with. From there, you're able to edit it however you want. And then once you're ready, you'll hit create final article. And within a few minutes, it literally creates that final article on a WordPress website for you. So what's happening here is when you're clicking create article or create, so you generate your expanded idea, it's sending a webhook to Airtable and it comes down this first route right here where it's generating that article. It's getting that idea that we came up with and it's running it through chat GPT and then updating Airtable again, which with that expanded idea, which is what we see right here right now. So once you've approved your expanded idea and you hit create final article right here, what that's doing is it's sending it down the second router, right? It's getting that record again. It's going to split it into individual chunks one by one. So it can process each top 10 item individually and then it's going to iterate through those so that's what's going on here is it it's grabbing the first top 10 item it's writing that article section for you it then goes it generates that image and then formats that html so you get proper headers you get words that are bolded like this and after it's done that for the entire article it then combines it all together it writes an introductory set section for you and then publishes that post on WordPress and put and paste the link to the final article back in that air table. All right, guys. So let's hop right into this. So first off, you're going to want to set up a watch responses air table webhook. So you're just going to add in that's going to be your initial trigger. You're going to hit add. Go ahead, copy that address to clipboard. And then you're gonna hop into Airtable. Now I called my database Pinterest Auto Blogger, okay? And I just named it Themes and the particular grid view I named Article. And so these are the different fields that you're going to wanna to create. First one is going to be ID. I always like to have an ID on any anything that I create really because it's always an easy reference number that's unique to every single row that you have. Next up, you have your idea. So this is where you're going to be generating your concept. So you can see I've been testing out a bunch of different stuff. Right now, Christmas is coming up, so we've been running some Christmas stuff. So you can see here, you know, a warm, cozy, festive, welcoming Christmas entryway table decor. So that is a long text. We also have expanded idea, which is long text. We have create, which is just a checkbox. We got create final article, which is another checkbox. And then we got final article link, which is a URL. Okay, so those are the fields that you need. So pretty simple database table setup. And then you're gonna come into automations and I have two automations. And both of those are when you click create and when you click create final article. So 
two different webhooks that are happening. So the first one is going to be when a record matches if create is checked. So when a record matches conditions, you set that as your trigger. The table is themes, the table that way I just introduced you, and you're gonna set it to when create is checked, okay? And then you're gonna run a script and you're going to want to edit the code. And once again, all of this code is going to be contained in the free school community. So you can go ahead over there and access that information. So you're going to want this, this is where you'll put in that webhook coming from the Airtable watch responses. So go ahead, copy that address to clipboard. We're gonna hop back into here. We're gonna paste that in. And then we are going to say the action is equal to generate article. So if you look right here, I have, a router and it goes down two different paths like I had explained earlier. So first we're going to want to set that action coming from the Airtable watch responses. The action is going to be generating that article. And then the second one is going to be splitting the listicle. So splitting that top 10 idea into individual items. And you're going to want to add an input variable equal to record ID with a capital I and then just go ahead and choose the Airtable record ID here. And so what's happening is that when you click that button, create, it's triggering this webhook right here. And this is just watching for responses. So it's sending that information. And then here I just have a tool which is setting my variable, which is my file API key. So the image generator that we're using is file.ai or Flux, if you haven't heard of it before. So yeah, you come in here, you go into your dashboard and then you can see that you have an API keys section. So I just went in here, I hit add key. I copied that key, save it somewhere safe. And then I popped back into here. I called it the file API key and I pasted that information in. So I'm not going to show you it because that's my API key that I have going right now, but you can see that it is passed right here later in the video. So we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. So once you have that variable set, the next thing you're going to want to do, right, is add that router. You're going to have the action equal to generate article. So it's going to come down here. We're going to get that record. And once again, we're connecting it to that Airtable base that we just created. And it's going to grab the record ID from the first step. Next up, we are going to create the expanded idea based on your top 10. So essentially we're saying, right, we're going to choose the uh, create a completion GPT 4.0, set it to use generate a listicle featuring the top 10 ideas. So we're passing that idea that we grabbed from the previous stage. Each list should spotlight the central decor theme, whether it's seasonal, stylistic, or functional. Ensure the item is formatted as follows. So you got title, aesthetic overview. So we're going to describe it a little bit. Some of the key elements like pillows, the color palette that we're striving after, some styling tips, the trend appeal of that specific decor and why it's a top pick. All right. And I have it, you can see it's formatted in a very specific way. And the reason that's important is that after when it comes to splitting it, it makes it much simpler. And then we are going to simply update a record. So you're going to add that record ID and then the expanded idea is going to be the result that's generated from there. And so if you come in here, you just hit create, it's going to generate something like this. Right, 10 different ideas, all split and in the proper format that we need. So after that's done, we're gonna create our second route. This one's same thing, gonna be action, except the action is gonna be equal to split listicle. And so if you come back into your automations within Airtable, under create final article, this one is simply going to be when create final article is checked instead of when create is checked. We're going to run a script and the only difference is going to be the action is going to be split listicle. So same thing, we're gonna get a record. We're gonna get all that information. We're going to now need that expanded idea that was created. And what we're going to do is we're going to prep it for it to be parsed properly. So what's happening here is we're gonna split the following idea the listicle right the 10 different ideas into logical chunks based on individual decor ideas so it's going to be formatted as a json object um, with an array called items and each object within the array should have the following keys so it's going to have title aesthetic overview key elements right all of those things that we just described it's going to have all of them it's going to be properly formatted in json format and then we are going to parse that result the json module so grab a parse json module so essentially we're going to parse all of them properly and then we're going to toss in an iterator so remember how in the chat gpt set we said uh, create an object with an array called items and within items we want the title we want all of these different things right so you can see 
now we can grab each of those individually whereas if we just went into the chat gpt module we wouldn't be able to select all of these as individual variables so it's really important that we toss in this iterator here and that we parse it first so now we are going to iterate through the array of items right if we didn't have this iterator here it would parse all 10 different ideas but then it would only work on the 10th portion so we want to be able to iterate through all of them and that's why we need the iterator now we are going to so here you can see we are going to write the article section we're first giving it a system prompt so we're essentially saying you're going to be pr provided with the title and a detail for home decor article article section begin the section with a header tag use only one heading tag in your response for additional headings use a subheading font instead but there should be a maximum of one to two subheadings in our response when using bullet points include a brief introduction sentence to explain the list use the items only when necessary to support your points and yeah so on and so forth you're going to write the section then we're tailoring it to specifically home decor so just modify it to however you want honestly and uh, talks a little bit about the language and the verbiage that you should be using and specifies don't return it in markdown and make sure that you have these key elements in there and after we give it the system prompt we give it the user prompt which is what uh, you would normally type in a chat gpt and it has the different sections of the iterator that are being passed so the title why topic etc so after it's written the first section i have this variable here it's called section media and this is essentially going to be the image that is going to be generated for that specific portion of the article and then we have a router so what's happening is we're creating a section media a blank variable it's going to first come up here it's going to send a request to Flux. So this is the URL that I'm using. I'm using the Flux Pro version, so the latest model, right? What I would suggest, it is it is four cents per image generation per megapixel. So it comes out to about four cents per, per image generation unless you're making some bigger pictures. And you can always explore, you know, look, there's a ton of different models. Even since I last came on here, there. look at this V1.1 Ultra. They have an even crazier version now. Looks now it's six cents per image but just shows you how advanced and how quick things are moving and so you can see that there's an endpoint url right here that's the one i'm using so if you wanted to use the ultra you can come into the api section and there's uh, you know a whole section detailing how you can set this up so you can see right here here's your url if you wanted to submit a request you would just change the end to v1.1 ultra if you wanted to use that and then we're doing a post me method because we're we're sending information to Flux. The header that you need is authorization key with your file API key that we set in the beginning. So you can see right here, authorization key, file key. It's exactly how we have it set up here. And then you're gonna set the body type to raw, the content type to JSON, and the request content is gonna be, um, essentially, I just came into the playground. And if you click here, you can switch it over to JSON. And now you can see this is the JSON information so i just went ahead i copied that and tossed it in here and i input my own information so i put the title the aesthetic the key elements and the color palette and that's it so that's going to generate that image and then we are setting that specific section media variable to the image source so it needs to be specifically in this format because it's not going to display on wordpress for you at the end so you can see here data within images and then the url so we're grabbing that url which is a link to that image that was just created. So now after that, it's gone, it's created that, it's gonna come down, continue down this route, and we are now going to grab that variable that was just set. So we essentially create the variable, we set it to the image, and then we go and we grab it. And then after we've grabbed it, we're going to format HTML. So same thing, this is just explaining the correct html formatting that we want because yeah we're trying to give it a specific style you know we want bold on certain words we want headings and so what i found is that even though you can write the article section here with specific headings if you pass it through another system prompt afterward that's specifically only focusing on html formatting you get a much better output so that's what's going on here and then what we're saying is in the second message you know we want the result and then the section media so essentially we want the article section 
and then we want a photo for that article section and then lastly we want a text aggregator at the end and we're going to set the source module to the iterator so essentially what that means is it's going to work through this right come down make an image come down here format it and we're going to separate the row by a new row every single time and it's only going to aggregate that entire blog post at the end once it's iterated through all 10 ideas and then the text is just going to be the final result from a formatted html with two spaces so after that after it's gone through all 10 right and it's created that portion we are now going to write the intro section so we're going to write the intro to the blog so you can see right here you'll create an intro section for an article based on the provided article text do not start with the heading here's the article only to return with the introduction and then we paste the text from the entire text aggregator it's going to go ahead and write us an introductory section and after that we're going to humanize the entirety of it so just get it to sound a little bit more human get it you know make it sound a little bit more friendly personable and so what we're saying is take the provided text while preserving the placement of heading bullet points list etc your writing should appeal to both beginners and seasoned home decor enthusiasts provide ideas that are both inspiring easy to follow this tone should be approachable creative so we're really giving it a persona for writing and then we are pasting in the introduction section and we are going to once again format that html so it's the same thing as uh, when we did it earlier it's going to pass the result from the humanized portion so now we have a formatted intro section we have a formatted entire article and then lastly we want to create the post within wordpress so to do that you'd come into plugins you would search for a new plugin right this one's called make activator so i already have it installed so it's not going to pop up here so you'll see it here and then you're going to have a little icon down here and when you click on that make icon it's going to give you an api key so take that API key, come back in here, add your WordPress, and then you just click add and you paste in your API key right here. And then you can see the WordPress REST API base URL. So it's usually your domain.com slash WordPress dash Jason. And so now we are creating that post and the title is going to be the original idea that we came up with. And we are going to have the result. So the formatted HTML intro section, give it a space. We are going to put in the entire body. So the text aggregator right here, the result, and then another new line. We're putting it under the post section. The date is going to be set to now. And then I like to put it into draft status just because I want to have one final review, make any changes. Maybe some of the formatting didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And that's pretty much it. And then lastly, after that post is created, we are going to use the get a post module. We're going to connect that directly once again to WordPress. The type is going to be set to post. And then the post ID is going to come from the previous step. So you can just find it in the previous step. You can see right here and bring that in. And then lastly, we want to update our Airtable with the actual URL. So you come right in here, the final article link, we're going to input that information. And then once that is done, that's pretty much it guys. Like now you're going to have a direct link to that. It's going to be in draft mode. So you can see here's the latest one that I created, you know, festive Christmas mantle decorations and the entire blog is generated with AI. It's absolutely insane, right? Look at all of these. Every image you see here is generated with AI. The entire article is generated with AI. It absolutely blows my mind away, honestly. This is wild. And the best part is, is it literally takes two to three minutes for this entire process to occur. So you could literally click run once and come up with another 10 ideas. And by the time that first article is done, you could have another 10 posts running. The power is absolutely insane. So I hope you got immense value out of this. If you did, I would really appreciate a subscribe. It allows me to keep making videos like this for you and it really helps support the channel and it's free. And if you are looking for the access link to my school community, you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one help, you can just input your information here. You're gonna get a call from my AI assistant. Check it out, see what the future has in store for all of us because this is where businesses are heading and uh, talk to it and you'll get a personalized email link to join the community and hope to see you in there. I hope that you build incredible things with this. I have a lot more coming your way and I'll catch you on the next one. I hope you have an incredible day. Peace.